throughout the years, watching some of the greatest footballers of all time has roused within me different emotions and reactions. While watching Zidane, I would stare in wide-eyed wonder at this magical midfield maestro doing things with the ball and creating space on the pitch in the ways that I had never seen before. Players like Ryan Giggs and Leo Messi have brought me to the edge of my seat and caused my heart to race with excitement as they take on entire teams by themselves. Then players like Henrik Larsson, Thierry Henry and Ronaldo Nazario have lifted me up out of that chair, pumping my fist as they find the back of the net and punish their opposition with their power, pace and precision. And if you're Gary Neville, watching Fernando Torres may cause you to spunk your pants on live TV in front of an audience of millions. Oh! Such is the power of football. There is one footballer who could always predictably coax one reaction from me though, and that was Ronaldinho. Watching him, there was nothing you could do but smile, and occasionally scratch your head in disbelief at what this man was doing with a the football. There was one moment from my adolescence and football watching journey that has stuck with me up until now, and I don't think it will ever leave me. In March 2005, Dino's Barca faced off against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge in the second leg of their last 16 Champions League tie. The Spanish superpower took with them a 2-1 lead from the Camp Nou. This was a huge game and there was so much hype surrounding it, and by god did it live up to its billing and more. Within 20 minutes, Chelsea were 3-0 up in an opening that I don't think Jose Mourinho dare predict even in his wildest dreams. On 27 minutes, Ronaldinho called one back from the spot to make it 3-1 on the night and 4-3 on aggregate. Then, just 7 minutes from half time, he did something so utterly unexpected, so utterly unexplainable, so utterly Ronaldinho Ronaldinho that I still struggle to describe what the fuck he did. Just outside the box, from a standing position, time seemed to stand still as he half scooped, half toe poked the ball into the bottom left corner. He gets the ball, he cocks his foot, sees it, and I don't know what he's done, I, I can't describe it. It's, it's unbelievable, it's like a, a toe punt almost, and he's absolutely, he just put it in the, the far corner. I'm absolutely dumbstruck. My first reaction was to scratch my head. How has that gone in? What's he done there? And when I saw the replay, I could only smile at the God-given genius and audacity of this man. In such a highly pressurised game, with his team unexpectedly behind and on the verge of being dumped out of Europe's Premier Club competition, he decided to do something experimental, something never seen before, something that could have totally failed and ended a promising move for Barca. But it did come off, it did end up in the back of the net, and he levelled the tie, and Barca would have gone through on away goals if the score had stayed that way, which it didn't. Not only that, but he had blown the mind of one 13 year old boy in a remote Scottish town and opened him up to what football could truly be when played without fear, when played without boundaries. And I'm sure that I wasn't the only one who felt this way after watching that incredible game, because if we take it as true that football is a theatre, then the players are performers and the pitch is their stage. Well, I believe that Ronaldinho is the greatest showman, a born entertainer. You just just knew that you were going to be enthralled and charmed if he was on the park. His unpredictability was only matched by his skill and mastery. Everything was done with flair and panache, whether that be receiving the ball and taking a first touch with his chest, shoulder, head, back, knee, foot or whatever else he thought best or the mind-blowing range of passes, silky back heels to an overlapping fullback, perfectly weighted defence splitting passes along the ground, little dinked through balls, scooped lobs and chips, or no look wonder passes, or the dribbling and running at defenders, whose legs would be tied into knots as they tried to guess which way the Brazilian was going to go, or the nutmegs, the stepovers and whatever other dizzying array of tricks he had up his sleeves. All of this before we've even mentioned the goals. As you may have gathered from his sensational strike against Chelsea that I was waxing lyrical about, Dino could stick it in the back of the net in myriad of ways. Accurate curling free kicks, or straight and sure seeking missile free kicks, up and over free kicks, swerving, shifting free kicks. Basically, Dino was a free kick master to add to the other long list of footballing disciplines he had mastered. Or the long range screamers, just dipping under the bar to finish off a mazy run, volleys, classic chips, cheeky chips, outrageous chips, back heels, overheads, glancing headers, bullets headers, some audacious piece of close control under pressure before lashing it away, a shimmy and a shuffle of the hips before thumping a worldie, sensational solo efforts, flicking the ball over a defender's head in the box and slotting it home, bamboozling his man before besting the keeper, pressing and pressuring to win the ball back, or intercepting and punishing slack play with a perfectly placed strike. You name the flavour, Gaucho had it in his locker. 
Without a doubt, some of the most eye-popping, mouth-watering, unforgettable goals in history came from this man. And to me, he wasn't playing in this way to show off or humiliate the opposition. He played in this way as I believe he thought it was the best way to do his job, which was to create and score goals for his team. And of course, beguile, engross and delight the adoring fans. He played this way because the soul and spirit and samba coursed through his veins and made his heart beat. He is one of, if not the greatest number 10 of all time. And I sadly believe we will never see his likes again. Not only because that type of flair, panache and natural showmanship is extremely rare, but because the game has changed and some joyless people forget that it should be fun and playful as well as being dramatic and tense. When we have players trying to break Richarlison's legs because he did a few keepy ups and many people online and in person applauding such brutishness or people calling full scale Cobra meetings to discuss Anthony and his 720 Beyblade spins then yes, it makes me feel that sadly we will never see the likes of Ronaldinho Gaucho grace our game again. Now obviously I'm not saying that these two are anywhere near the levels that he was but there is something of the same spirit in what they do and it's something I feel we should be embracing and applauding, not shunning and booing. Oh. 